Hello everyone, I'd like to welcome you to the presentation by Evelyn Gios, Hans Ola Hatzel, Chris Biemann and me. My name is Heimo Stiemer and uh, the subject of the presentation is from narrativity to relevance, a computational approach based on events. The starting point of our study, which will be uh, presented in the following, is a frequently discussed question in literary studies about um, part particularly important passages in literary texts. With regard to plot, and by plot we mean the sequence of events that make up a story or the action structure of a story. Well, with regard to the plot, the question is what are the events in a text that are relevant or rather particularly relevant to the plot? There are reception-oriented approaches to relevance, such as the consideration of passages frequently cited in scholarly publications, so-called key passages, and uh, other approaches are directed towards empirical reader research. The approach in our study, on the other hand, is rather text-oriented than reception-oriented. We start directly from the text, or we start directly from the text surface. With a text-centered approach, we are moving into the field of research in which the categories eventfulness and tellability are very important. Which events, which are to be understood as the smallest elements or units of narrative texts, which events are most eventful or tellable? And to what extent is there a relation between this eventfulness and the relevance of text passages? This is what the following is about. We assume that uh, the relevance of a text passage is related to its narrativity and tellability, and thus we conceptualize relevance as a possible feature of events. Our research question is accordingly, is there a relation between textual phenomena of event and the relevance, which is narrativity, in a given text passage. To uh, explore this relation, we compared the events in literary texts annotated according to our formalization of events with summaries of these texts. And um, the further explanations will follow this road map. Um, I will first briefly explain the approach of uh, operationalization of events and um, then I will present uh, the research design and the evaluation of the summaries and I will discuss in detail the relation between narrativity and plot reconstructed on the basis of our data. At the end, no surprise, there will be a conclusion. We now came to uh, our approach of formalizing and operationalizing events in texts. And um, in the light of the state of research, we operationalized the concept of event in such a way that an automated annotation of verbal phrases can capture different types of events and in particular their representation on the surface of the text. This was done under the assumption that by classifying events, their respective narrative value can also be captured. Events in uh, narratology are related to the so-called discours, in other words, the how of a story, as well as to the so-called histoire, the what of a story. Since we start from the text surface, the event types covered in our typology are of a basic nature and are to be regarded as represent, uh, representatives of event 1. The distinction between event 1 and event 2 was introduced by Peter Hühn, whereby all events, first of all, represent changes of state. According to Hühn, event 1 is, and I quote, a general type of event that has no special requirements. A type 1 event is any change of state explicitly or implicitly represented in a text. Event 2, in turn, presents additional 
interpretative context-dependent characteristics. We distinguish between change of state, process, stative and non-events, but uh, I will not discuss the different types of events here, but refer to an article by Evelyn Gios and my Michael Faut in the Journal for Computational Literary Studies, which explains this in detail. It is, but it is important to note uh, that each of the event types uh, has been assigned a different narrativity value that is based on narrative theory. By including the non-events, each verbal phrase receives a narrativity value, and in this way we can generate uh, interpretatable narrativity graphs that are supposed to represent the narrativity of the whole text. And uh, here you can see the narrativity graph of Kafka's Metamorphosis and uh, the peaks of the line seem to align with passages in the text that would typically be identified by literary scholars as important to the development of uh, the story. The first peak that is highlighted by the black arrow on the slide, for example, corresponds to the passage in which the protagonist, Gregor, after his transformation into a vermin, appears before his family for the first time. And the other peaks represent the passages with the confrontation with the family in the living room, the escalation with the father, the moving in of the new tenants and subsequent the escape, and finally the last uh, peak, uh, the death of Gregor. Now um, we turn to the research design. The design of the study was uh, guided by the idea that text passages, because of their mention in summaries, are marked as important for plot development and hence as highly relevant. Accordingly, plot summaries can be compared to the particularly eventful text passages we detected using our approach just described. For our study, for our study, we used four types uh, of summaries. First, uh, semi-professional summaries written by students of liter literary studies. Second, professional summaries from the well-known Kindler's Literatur Lexicon. Third, user-generated summaries from the online encyclopedia Wikipedia, and fourth. Summaries of the text generated by the ChatGPT language model. And um, it should be noted that uh, we used version 3.5 of ChatGPT, which, according to various studies, has lower performance than ChatGPT 4. Uh, the student summaries were written in a seminar and they were written as summaries explicitly related to the plot. This is important. Um, and um, yeah, the, the, the task was that uh, these summaries uh, have no more than 20 sentences and in addition students were asked not to use any other resources such as summaries on the Wikipedia or from literary encyclopedias. From the contributions of Kinder Literatur Lexicon and uh, Wikipedia, only those passages were used that relate to the plot in the literary texts and uh, passages that are devoted to the author or to the reception or interpretation were not included. This filter was also implemented uh, in the prompt at ChatGPT. Uh, Through a collaborative annotation of the individual sentences, their reference to the plot of the text was annotated and the corresponding gold standard was created, which was the basis for further analysis. This way, it was made sure that all four summary types are plot-oriented. 
And the following the summaries were annotated in the primary text or the literary text where for each sentence of a summary all events to which the sentence refers were annotated. Accordingly, the, uh, the pre-existing annotations of all verb phrases related to the four event types were used as units again. Thereby, one or more spans in the original text that contain sequences of relevant events were annotated as belonging to each sequence of relevant events. Thus, one sentence of the summary may refer to several passages in the original text. At the same time, multiple sentences in the summary can refer to the same events in the story. Well, on uh, this slide you can see some information about our data set. The literary texts are prose texts by Heinrich von Kleist, Annette von Troste, Hülshoff, Marie von Ebner, Eschenbach and the aforementioned Franz Kafka. The canonical status of the texts can be rated differently, but those all of them are to a certain extent canonical. The study is based on 10 summaries from the students for each work. In addition, one each from Wikipedia and Kindler's Literatur Lexicon. For three of the four texts, summaries from ChatGPT were included in our analysis. And uh, the ChatGPT summary of the Troste Hülshoff text contained too many obvious hallucinations, uh, so we did not include it. We evaluated the quality of the summaries, which means their similarity uh, with three metrics, uh, largely lexical metrics, uh, well, and grams, a metric based on distributional semantics, word embeddings, and uh, one that largely uh, detaches from linguistic structure and makes content-based comparisons. And for this purpose, we adapted the so-called pyramid method. And the pyramid method was developed for the automatic evaluation of machine-generated summaries and works on the basis of the so-called summary content units, SCU, which were compared with reference summaries. Our assumption was that the semi-professional summaries are consistently action-related, which the guidelines specifically ask the students to focus on. Therefore, we compared one semi-professional summary to all other semi-professional summaries and each summary of all other types to all semi-professional summaries. Next slide. Uh, here I only um, present extracts from the evaluation and um, the value 1 would mean that the summaries are of one type are almost identical to the semi-professional summaries. The semi-professional summaries of the students were compared with each other, as already mentioned. Oh, sorry. Uh, it can be seen that the semi-professional summaries and the ChatGPT summaries almost consistently have the highest n-gram-based similarity scores. However, the n-gram methods tell us, probably due to the stylistic differences, that summary types differ greatly from each other. It is interesting to note that the quality of the ChatGPT summaries is similar to that of the other summary types. This is also evident from the embedding-based evaluation method with a BERT score. The similarity comparison via the contextualized embeddings tells us no strong differences. So it could be possible that the differences are mainly on the text surface. I will not explain the pyramid method in detail, just this. The method captures the content-based similarity of the summaries and works by matching SCUs, you remember, summary content units, with reference summaries. For the evaluation of the summaries, the distribution of the SCUs is crucial. A summary under evaluation in order to get a high 
pyramid score should get as used from high layers of the pyramid. In the figure you can see two different summaries that receive the same pyramid score. We have adapted the method according to our requirements uh, and we use the method to compare the summaries with each other and not with reference texts and we did not use SCUs but text spans. You can see the summary scores here in table 4. The pyramid scores range from 0 to 1 where 1 is a perfect summary. Unlike the other methods, ChatGPT performs poorly here, which may be due to the content-focused comparison method. So, how are tellability represented by the plot summaries and narrativity represented by the narrativity graphs related? To explore this, we calculated the narrativity value of the passages referenced in the summaries. We related this to the expected total score given the length of the text passages included in the summary. Thus, on average, a value of 1.0 results when the passages are randomly selected. A value more than 1.0 on the other hand, means that passages referenced in the summary have more narrativity than passages not referenced. In a second step, we compared the narrativity curves with the summaries using the calculation of the peak prominence factor. Each event is now assigned the peak prominence value if it represents a local maxi uh, maximum, zero otherwise. Now we proceed as above and compare the expected prominence value with the actual one. I come to the conclusion. I have discussed our operationalization of relevance of plot via narrativity, which in turn is based on events. Comparing this operationalization to summaries, we were able to show a certain relation between narrativity and relevance in our study. Our operationalization is based on textual phenomena and our goal is to use this as a basis to further developing our event concept and to do this in the direction of event two. As you may recall, this type of events encompasses events that are considered to have a stronger plot relevance. From our point of view, the correlation is especially interesting and it needs to be investigated in which cases elevated narrativity is actually in line with plot relevance. Thank you very much for your interest and for your attention. And uh, we look forward to the discussion of Monopoly. Bye.